I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis In this video, what we're gonna talk about is chopping logs up into little chunks of firewood and how to do that if you are older you're elderly you're injured you're not that strong you think that you know chopping firewood isn't for you uh, in our culture oftentimes people think that there's like certain types of people that do different types of things I remember just a few days ago I was uh, using a chainsaw to cut a bunch of logs I was at a playground and there was like a oak limb that was threatening to kind of fall down on the kids who was dead I was chopping it up and one of the parents comes over and they're like oh you're making some thirst trap content I had no idea what they were talking about. They had to explain it to me. I, apparently what thirst trap content is, is it's when guys post images of themselves online, like not intentionally, but it's totally intentional, uh, of them doing like tough stuff, like generally cutting firewood apparently, uh, is an effort to try to uh, accidentally, but totally intentionally, put out content that makes them look masculine and beefy. Uh, you no, know, that happens all throughout our culture where uh, people are trying to create a certain image uh, for themselves. And it really all falls into stereotypes. Uh, we have a stereotype that you gotta be, be a big beefy guy if you're gonna chop firewood. You gotta be a woman if you're gonna cook in the kitchen. These are both completely idiotic stereotypes. You don't have to be a big beefy guy to chop firewood. You don't have to be a woman to work in the kitchen. These stereotypes are a disservice to everybody and the more that we can get rid of them, the better. Today, we're gonna get rid of the stereotype that you gotta be a big beefy guy to chop firewood because look, hey, I'm doing it. So let's, uh, let's uh, hop in. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the tools that we're gonna use. This is an ax, right? Nope, not an ax. It's pretty much an ax, but it's got a little different feature on it. And this um, is a, a wood splitting maul. See these little flutes off to the side where it comes out to these little points here and here? These little additional flutes on the sides, these are what turns an ax into a wood splitting maul. And you can chop firewood with an ax, you can split firewood with an ax, it'll totally work. But if you can get yourself a wood splitting maul, it works so much better. It makes you feel like a superman or a superwoman, whatever is your persuasion. So we're gonna be using a wood splitting maul in this video. Uh, next thing I wanna talk about is I have another video on this topic, which gets much more into detail about, uh, you know, how to attack the wood, where to strike the wood, all that kind of stuff. There's a link down in the description below to that video, and I'll put a card if you, you have cards in, on your, you know, you, uh, device. Here's a link to that video so you can check it out uh, if you want to get more information on what we're talking about today. What we're going to talk about specifically today is that you can, uh, as long as you can take an ax and hold it up over your head, you can do a series of really wimpy uh, um, uh, swings at a log and you can break it apart. It may take you a little bit longer, but you're gonna be able to do it without creating injuries in yourself. And that is specifically what I'm focusing on in this video today is I have some injuries in my right arm. As I mentioned before, and as you can clearly see, I'm not a big beefy guy, but whenever I'm doing a job, I give it my 110% and I, I oftentimes kind of injure myself. I've got kind of like a pulled something back in here behind my elbow and something up in my, in my shoulder also. So I'm gonna be swinging uh, this wood splitting mall in this video in a really kind of uh, wimpy sort of way because I don't want to exacerbate any of what I've got going on up over here. I'm injured, I'm gonna be able to do this, no problem at all. As long as you can get it up over your head and let gravity do its thing, you're gonna be able to make it work. So let's get rid of this for just one second. What I wanna talk about next is two different types of wood. Uh, there are uh, two basic types of logs that you're gonna attack. One are the pain in the ass ones, and the others are the ones that are not a pain in the ass. Let's uh, get an example of a pain in the ass one first. Ah, there we go, okay. It's kind of heavy. All right, this is white pine, and white pine is not a very uh, difficult wood to split. It splits totally fine, but what makes this one difficult is we've got a little branch here, which creates a knot in the wood. We get another branch here, and another one, a smaller one here. There's a small one over here, there's a big one over here, there's a big one over here. There are a lot of knots in this wood. Knots, which are uh, where branches are coming out of the tree, make wood really difficult to split, uh, or at least comparatively so. This is totally splittable. Even if I'm injured, I can totally do it, but I'm not gonna do it in this video because uh, I've already done a video on that. Again, down in the description below, you can check out the full video about how to attack a log like this. What we wanna really talk about in this video is how to do a swing where you're not gonna be injuring yourself if you're already injured. I, okay, 
we're getting into medical advice here. Consult your doctor and find out blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I'm just showing you what the way that I do it that seems to work for me. If I've got a little injury, I can kind of work around it and I don't make it worse for myself. But, you know, obviously everybody's got a different situation. So let's get this out of here and let's get the, you know, regular kind of easy piece of wood that doesn't have all this stuff. But if you want to, again, learn, learn about how to do this, description below, there's a link to my full video. There's some thirst trap content right there. Uh, there's a video all about how to, uh, how to do that. So here is a regular kind of easy log, also white pine. It just doesn't have any knots in it. So, so how do we go about this? Like I mentioned, I've got like kind of an injury here. I've got an injury here. I, I don't want to be jerking this arm around, you know, and if you think about, you know, all, all that, all that thirst trap content, you know, it's guys are swing, you got the ax way up over their head and they power slam it down into the wood. We're not going to do any of that because all it takes is just a little bit of momentum generated by gravity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select a spot on here that I want to hit. Uh, here's the center. Oh, this isn't the uh, geometric center of the log, but it's the center of where all the growth rings are. It's right here, and here's the edge. I'm going to kind of pick a point right between the two of those. I, I could go anywhere. Again, if you want to get more uh, into uh, depth on that kind of stuff, check out my other video. I'm just going to pick a spot right there, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it works. So this is it. I'm taking the axe holding it just about like that. I mean, you can hold it up like this. You're gonna get more momentum if you, you can get it back there. Hold it as far back as you feel comfortable holding it. And you don't want your hands so far up there that if you miss, you like smash your fingers, obviously. I'm gonna hold it just about like that, okay? Nice and easy, just lifting it up. I'm not gonna swing this down, I'm gonna let it fall. Here we go. One, as you probably noticed, the log didn't explode. <laughs> we didn't have the, the chunk of firewood going off over in that direction. One reason for that is that this is a pretty moist piece of wood. Wood splits easier when it's dry. The other reason is you saw that swing. It was like a nothing swing. But a bunch of nothing swings add up to something. I'm going to try to hit that same mark again. And we'll see if this place is going to break. Okay. I'm looking at it. I'm not seeing any splitting happening in this area. Uh, normally you'd see uh, uh, some splits splitting away from the, uh, the top of the axe head if this area was gonna be going for you. Uh, I'm gonna give it a couple more swings and if I don't feel like it's starting to split in this area, I'm gonna move a little bit closer out towards the edge. Here we go. Try again. I missed a little there. Try again. Okay, so I'm feeling like this area, you know, mostly because the, this log is pretty soft and because I'm doing really wimpy swings, this area here is not going to split. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move a little bit closer out to the edge there. Earlier, I kind of paused for a second. You might have noticed me pa pausing, and that was because I, I did this to, to break the axe out. That put a little bit of strain into my shoulders. I kind of shocked the muscles there. And if you had kind of a weak arm, uh, that's maybe not the best way to do it. You probably want to uh, just ease it down like that to get it out. My normal way is to kind of just jam, uh, jam it down, but I'm a little injured today. So I'll try again. I'm going to, again, bring this down. This is where I was hitting. I'm going to try to hit between there and the edge over here. If we can't get a big chunk off, we'll try for a small one. Here we go. You hear that difference? You can hear that difference, and the axe isn't wedged in there because we got a crack starting down. Same kind of thing. I was just letting the... Uh, force of gravity. I'm adding a little bit of oomph to it as it goes down, but not much. Woo! There we go. Now that we got that off, we've broken this edge, and we're going to be able to pull pieces off this, this outside surface a lot more easily. I'm going to take this now and rotate it, and now I'm going to do another split right off to the side, about the same distance from the edge, because the log feels like it's liking that. Lifting it up, letting it fall. All right. I didn't hear a crack on that one. I was a little bit further in. Let's try that again. Ooh, I heard a crack on that one. I hit the same spot, and now we get a crack going. It's pretty stupid. You shouldn't put your fingers into the crack. If it closes back up, it'll pinch you. All right, and same thing. Pull it out. I think it's going to pop off on this one, as long as I hit it in the same spot. Here we go. And we rotate it again. We're going to try, same thing, just a couple inches in. Didn't hear any crack in there, don't see any crack in there. We'll try it again, nice and gentle. Pulling the axe out. There we go. All these seem like they take like one hit to weaken it, and then the, the next hit uh, goes in. 
I'm gonna do this a little more from the side so you guys can see from this side how we're coming down. Again, no, no crack there. Just hit it in the same spot again. No crack again, no big deal. We just keep, keep at it. There we go, next one. That's what you get a lot of when you have a lot of knots in the wood, is you'll just keep hitting and hitting, and the knots add, act like rebar and concrete. They hold the whole thing together. Okay, same deal. I'm uh, actually going for a uh, more aggressive chunk here. A lot of these other ones are just a couple inches. This one's almost four inches I'm going to go for knocking off. All right, enough from there. This might take uh, three hits, four hits, or I may have to go smaller. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not feeling any cracking, and we're not hearing any cracking here, so this may not work. I've been all shooting in the middle. I'm going to try to go a little bit closer to the edge here, see if I can weaken this outer edge. Just letting the axe fall. All right. I didn't hear any crack. I see a little crack. I'm going to try to hit that again. And this is what great, what's great about human tools is that they allow us to take our bodies. I mean, I can never, I can never just punch this log apart. But the, the tools allow us to take time and convert time into power. So. We're spreading out our attack over a period of time here. There we go. That uh, On that hit, I abandoned going off after here, and I, I did more of the back side, and I figured I'd weakened this front enough, and I was able to peel it off. You can see what might have been, oh no, that's not, I was mistaken. I was thinking maybe there was a knot here, but this little spot here, this is there was a grub in this tree here. You can see it's a uh, little uh, chewed up bits of wood in there. So we're going to keep coming around the tree. Once we get the outside broken up, actually, the inside tends to be easier. All right, there's a crack there already. Next hit, that one's going to come off as long as I hit it correctly. There we go. And this is actually one part uh, that can put a little strain on you, is uh, when, when the, uh, the axe goes through easier than you're necessarily expecting it to. Sometimes you, you kind of want to break it. Uh, by break it, I mean like arrest its forward motion and that can put some strain into your muscles too. You got to watch out for that. You just want to, oh, actually what you want to do is just let the, the axe continue going down and, and fall. So because this is all weakened on all the sides, I'm going to go for a fairly aggressive chunk here. I'm going for four or five inches or so. There we go. And I'll place this down, bring this back up. And you can see nothing I've been doing, you haven't heard any grunting coming out of me. There hasn't been any any uh, you know muscles exploding or fireworks, just nice little swoops. I'm going right for the center now, and I already see kind of a split happening. It's just over and over. If you're injured, you can do this, depending on your injury. If you are uh, you know not particularly strong, you can do this. If you're older, you can do this. Um, again, uh, check with your doctor. Blah 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 blah. All right, we've already got a crack going in here. I could just hit this again, or sometimes you can just take the uh, thing and move it through. Nah, I'm just going to hit it again. This is going to really fall. Uh, this one's going to really fly apart because it's all weakened already. And uh, this is one of those things where I'm going to risk kind of uh, jerking my muscles as it goes through. So you just got to remember to just let the axe go all the way through. Don't try to stop it. Here we go. There we go. That's one of the reasons it's great to do it up on a chopping block like that. Not only does it bring it up to your level, but you don't have to worry about dulling the blade. Uh, you know, if you go down to the, into the earth and you get into like rocks and stuff like that. So it's a nice surface. It also spreads out the, um, the impact so that you get more ground uh, absorbing it so that uh, it makes uh, less bounce, less kickback. You can have a, a sharper hit. This is going to be the last hit actually. Right here, I'm just going to cut this one in half. This would fit, this was, this would fit into my wood stove, but I'm going to cut it in half. I think that this will just be a one, one hit one. There we go. And there you go. As you can see, uh, you know, I haven't broken a sweat. I, I wasn't doing any, any grunting. Uh, you know, I'm not a gigantic person, but I was able to make short work of this, uh, you know, it was a big piece of wood that we uh, took care of. So if you are in a position where you are new to burning firewood and you want to be able to chop stuff up, even if you're not like this, you know, giant, 
you know, muscle man kind of person, you can chop up firewood. It just takes a little bit of time. It takes having the proper tools. It takes having a little understanding. Again, if you want to get uh, more and deeper into uh, this topic, uh, I've got a video down in the description below where I go into like kind of, uh, you know, where to hit on the log, you know, really uh, a lot more about uh, shot selection, so to speak, uh, and you know more about tools, more about stands, all that kind of stuff. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope that you can use firewood as a way of augmenting your heating and keep you keeping you warm this winter. Firewood is something that we use all the time here. It's our primary heating source at our house. We uh, heat our house every year with about a cord to a cord and a half of firewood each year. It's just very well insulated, so we don't need very much. And between that and the solar input of the uh, the heat energy coming in through the windows, uh, you know we're totally fine. In addition to heating our house with firewood, we're also able to cook over the wood stove. It's got a nice cook surface on the top, so we can do our cooking and our heating all using the same fuel source. So it's very economical, it's very efficient, and the you know, pollution does come up out of our chimney, but the pollution goes up and it gets turned into more of what you see around me. More trees for years to come. That's it. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.